G'day. Today we're doing an engine service on a 2020 MR Triton 2.4 litre and this one's only done 75,000 Ks but I'd just like to show you the catch can it's got a catch can on it over into the turbo you can see there's a little bit of muck there and look at that now what happens in the winter time I believe the, the alloy actually absorbs a bit of the, the moisture out of the air. Look at that. You can imagine that recirculating back into your motor if you didn't have a catch can. There's a fair bit of water in that in there too. So periodically it's a good idea to clean these. More often when the conditions are damp like in the winter time. So quite often dealerships don't like these catch cans, especially while they're under warranty. But the question is, do you really want this circulating back through your motor? While you've got it up, good idea to check for any oil leaks check your CV boots anything that might have been hit or anything all these cables and that that's the drain plug on the motor and right up the front here we've got the engine oil filter there we go there you'd probably put a slightly larger one in there if you could find one with the same thread 17 mil make sure you've got a adequately sized container to take all the oil you'll need probably at least 10 litre container and you just keep pushing the plug in into the thread until you're ready to pull it out and that way you'll make less mess while that's draining good idea to check the rest of the stuff under the car rear shocks unis Check if you've got any uh, grease nipples on these. We're going to change the oil in the transfer case. And the rear diff, front diff. Good idea. Add magnets to these if they haven't got it. All the CV boots, rubbers, the bush bushes there on the suspension and on the steering. start trickling now so make sure you've got your tray underneath now I'll just show you something I'll just measure that filter seal landing got 75 on the outside and about 55 millimeters on the inside so here's the original one and you can see that the, the middle of the seal landings 55 so it sits right on the inner side of that but what we could do if we find another filter with the same thread 20 mil by 1.5 thread pitch you see this one this one's out of a hold and the old Z30 and we as long as that seal is not over 75 mil that one's 70 you see that that filter could replace that one they're probably a lot cheaper to buy too and you've got a bigger filter the only problem is is sometimes you don't have room to thread it on but what you can do you can put a remote oil filter kit in there where you just thread the fitting where this filter would go and then you can put it basically anywhere at an easier access point on your vehicle oh, 
There you go. You can see there's plenty of room there, even for the bigger filter. We're going to put leave the original one there, only because the vehicle's still under warranty. But you can see that one, the much bigger filter will fit. And when you're threading it on, you thread it on, you get the rubber just up to it, and you can just go another half to three quarters of a turn. You don't need to over tighten it because the rubber's actually sealing it. Now we're on the rear diff, Steve-O's a bit too quick for me. We've put a neodymium magnet on the drain plug. But what's important to note is that sometimes on diffs and transfer cases you don't want the magnet going too near a gear otherwise it can magnetize the gear and cause issues this could be attracted to a bearing or the gear so we're putting the neodymium one in you can see there's plenty of room there and they're a lot stronger if you know anything about neodymium magnets they're a lot stronger than the old factory ones. You can see even the factory one has collected a lot of that rubbish. Now when you're filling your diff, you want, always want to leave a little bit of time for the thick oil to actually travel down the axle tube there. Quite often, people get a bit too excited and want to fill it quickly and don't allow that oil to flow all the way along there. And you can see if you move your hands there, right? Yeah, you can see the height of it is the oil level heights probably a, not quite halfway up, but almost halfway up the axle tube there. You want to make sure that the, the bearings at the ends there are getting oil as well. Transfer case, same magnetic plug, 18 by 1.5 thread pitch and we top it up up here and the front diff as well is the same plug so if you're replacing these you need three 18 by 1.5 mil plugs neodymium ideal and same as the rear diff you got to allow a bit of time for the oil to go through these tubes. The one thing I forgot to mention, you want to check, make sure you've got the right diff oil in there. And you want to check that you've got a limited slip diff or uh, just a normal diff. The way you tell that is if you spin one wheel independently, it won't affect the other one. So you can see these are both pulling try and push them both, you can see they're both locked up. So it's an LSD or a limited slip diff in the rear there. Don't forget to double check your work, make sure you've tightened top and bottom plugs, clean any oil that you may have spilt. Same on the transfer case, we've got the stone guard back on there, same as the engine oil filter and the front, the front diff plugs and anything else you may have checked these ones have grease nipples on the on some of the universal joints so make sure you clean them off before you grease it and also clean the grease off after you grease it and there are the grease nipples on the rear tail shaft and the idea is to keep the grease gun on square with the nipple and you just want to see the grease just coming out don't don't go too much if it starts coming out that's where you stop that's it you can just see it just started moving there righty yeah there we go and the rear one can't see. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Yeah, you can see it all coming out everywhere. You don't want to have all that grease flinging around. It'll just fling all over your exhaust muffler and everywhere. 
and it's a good idea to just clean all that grease off because then you don't get road dirt sticking to it. Make sure you've got the right oil, the full synthetic C3, what is it? 530, 5W30. And these take about eight to eight and a half litres depending on how long you let it drain out. Make sure you put a bit less in and then just top it up and give it a bit of time to, to reach down onto the bottom of the dipstick as well. And now's the time to check all your radiator hoses, make sure they're nice and rubbery, not crunchy. It's only done 75,000 so you wouldn't expect it to be very bad. Just make sure all the battery terminals are all okay. Power steering fluid level, you've got to check that with the motor running. Replace, we've replaced the air filter. The brake fluid, always important with power steering fluid and also your brake fluid to actually remove the cap to see the oil level. What can happen is that the oil, when it gets a bit older, it'll actually stain the plastic on on the bottle there and you'll think there's enough there but it actually hasn't got enough. Same as the power steering over there. Good idea to actually take the cap off. Top up your overflow, top up your windshield bottle, check your wiper blades front and rear if they've got the rear ones and there we go, job's done. Good idea to also check all your lights they're working, your parkers, your headlights, your high beams, your indicators, tail lights, number plate lights, job's done. Anyway, I hope that helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any comments or suggestions in the section below. And throw us a beer if any of this information helps you save a bit of time and money. Much appreciated, keeps us motivated. The link is in the section in the description there. Thank you for watching.